many non-native species were introduced into the UK by accident, often by Victorian collectors, as that song from Genesis accurately puts it. Our waterways are often environments that allow these plants and animals to thrive at the expense of our native flora and fauna, as well as causing damage to the environment. The Himalayan balsam is one such plant, introduced to Britain in the mid-19th century by Victorian gardeners. It's the tallest annual plant in the UK, growing to a height of over 3 metres. It grows in dense stands that crowd out native plants and takes over whole areas of Rouen Canal. But when it dies back in the winter, it leaves areas bare with no roots left to strengthen the bank and the bank becomes susceptible to erosion. The infamous giant hogweed is a direct threat to human health as it has phytotoxic sap. If this sap comes into contact with the skin, it can cause severe burns and blistering as it, as it, and it makes the skin extremely sensitive to sunlight for years. It is easy to identify when fully grown because of its size, but when young and small it is much more difficult to distinguish from native plants such as cow parsley or native hogweed, which is not toxic. Japanese knotweed, or Fallopia japonica, is a tall herbaceous perennial, which forms dense bamboo thickets that shade out the native species. It is a common sight across much of the UK and contributes to bankside erosion increasing the likelihood of flooding. Floating pennywort is a species native to North America and was first discovered in the UK in Essex in 1990. It is common in the southeast of England and occasionally found in the northwest of England and in Wales. As well as outcompeting native species, it blocks out sunlight, reproduces water temperature and prevents air-breathing insects from reaching the water's surface. It deoxygenizes the water by reducing the available light to waterweed and algae, then it causes its nutrient overload when it dies back. It can grow up to 20 centimeters a day and form great mats of vegetation that quickly cover all of the, all of the water and impede the flow and increase the, increases the risk of flooding. Signal crayfish were introduced in the 1970s and have driven the native crayfish towards extension through the spread of the crayfish plague and competition for resources. Signal crayfish are much bigger and grow faster and reproduce quickly and their burrows can destabilize banks increasing the risk of flood and the silt load in the water. They feed on fish and amphibian eggs, tadpoles and juvenile fish as well as in aquatic invertebrates. There are many local conservation groups around that deal directly with these threats to the environment. As paddlers, we have a role to play in avoiding transmission and reporting these findings if we see any. Key to this is the check, clean and dry procedure 